Welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman, and I love cars. Today is my channel's one-year anniversary. Thanks to everyone who watched and subscribed. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Mercury Marauder. The Marauder was a rare car with only 11,052 cars produced, but you wouldn't have known it working at the famous infamous Mustang Tuner shop where I was employed at when these cars were new. It seemed like all our wealthy customers that had Mach 1s and Cobras had a Marauder as a daily driver. It was not unusual to see six or seven Marauders in the customer parking lot. At the time, I drove a beat-up Lada Neva as my daily driver so I could afford to drive my Mustang in the summer. Having a Marauder as a daily was a dream for me in 2003. Fast forward to 2022 and the Marauder has become quite the bargain and they are definitely worth a second look. In 2003, Mercury brought back the Marauder nameplate that hadn't been used since 1970. The 2003 namesake was true to its 60s, 70s counterpart. The new Marauder was based on the Grand Marquis, but offered an upgraded chassis suspension and a more powerful engine over the standard car. The Marauder was exclusive to Mercury not having a Ford counterpart. This hadn't happened since 1960. Mercury designed the Marauder to be a successor to the popular 1994-1996 Chevrolet Impala SS. When the Marauder was cancelled in 2004, Chrysler filled the void in the market with the 2005 Chrysler 300, which was both rear-wheel drive and V8 powered. Yeah. Mercury had hoped to sell 18,000 vehicles per year, but unfortunately the Marauder only sold 11,052 units over the two-year production run. On a positive note, the Marauder did attract much younger buyers. The average age of Marauder buyer was 51, which was a whopping 18 years younger than the average buyer of a Grand Marquis. I was today years old when I found out that Mercury had a Marauder convertible concept. The 2002 concept car was a two-door, five-passenger convertible that started life as a 1999 Ford Crown Victoria LX. The four-door sedan body was customized into a two-door convertible, and the stock 215-horsepower 4.6-liter V8 was fitted with a supercharger, upping the power to 335 horsepower. Boom. Hi, I'm Jackie McLaren. Please remember to like and subscribe and comment to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. There was consumer demand at the time for a two-door convertible, but sadly, it never went into production. The production Marauder was built on the Panther platform, which had been updated with rack and pinion steering for 2003. The Marauder also got COP brakes, COP suspension, COP 355 axle ratio, COP limited slip differential, and COP aluminum dry shaft from the Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. It's got a COP motor, a 440 cubic inch plant. It's got COP tires, COP suspension, COP shocks. It's a model made before catalytic converters, so it'll run good on regular gas. What do you say? Is it the new Blues Mobile or what? Fix a cigarette lighter. Production Marauders used an evolution of the Lincoln Mark 8 engine. The engine was a 302 horsepower, 4.6 liter dual overhead cam V8, which was also used in the Lincoln Aviator and the Mustang Mach 1. Marauders had a four speed automatic transmission. In 2003, they used a 4R70W transmission. For 2004, they used a 4R75W. The 70 and 4R70W and the 75 and 4R75W are the torque ratings. 700 and 750 foot-pounds of torque, which is the engine's torque multiplied by two by the torque converter. So, 350 horsepower and 375 foot-pounds of engine torque. The Marauder was given a monochromatic paint job, which may have been inspired by the sinister Chevy Impala SS, which also had police cruiser roots. In contrast to the Grandma Keith, I mean, uh, Grand Marquis, the only chrome you would find on the Marauder were the wheels, window trims, and Mercury emblems. Marauder shared most of his exterior trim with the Grand Marquis. The rear and side trim came from the Crown Victoria LX Sport. Front and rear bumper covers were unique to the Marauder. The rear bumper featured the model's name, Marauder, embossed into it, and large cutouts for the Meg's chrome exhaust tips. Front bumper covers featured cutouts for the CB fog lamps. Grand Marquis headlights and corner lights were used, but they had their non-reflective surfaces blacked out to give the Marauder a more menacing look. The murdered outlook. As the cool kids say, didn't stop there as Crown Victoria LX Sport source taillights and reverse lights were also tinted black. To finish out the monochromatic look, the grill was painted black with body color surround. The Marauder got specific 18-inch five-spoke wheels with retro 1960s-style Mercury Roman God center cap emblems. Marauder interiors featured leather bucket seats and center console-mounted shifter. Satin aluminum trim replaced the Grand Marquis wood trim. 
A Marauder specific instrument panel featured aluminum finish gauges, a 140 mile per hour speedometer, and a tachometer. The tachometer placement required the relocation of the voltmeter and the oil pressure gauges. For these gauges, Mercury chose real deal autometers, which were a nice performance touch. Stock performance. Motor Week tested a 2003 Marauder and it did 0 to 60 miles an hour in 7.5 seconds and did the quarter mile in 15.6 and 93 miles an hour. Aftermarket performance. Cold air intake. Headers. Cams. Supercharger kit. Handling goodies. Coilovers. Beefier sway bars. Porn star brakes. Racing. Marauders are often drag raced. Wow, that Marauder took that Hellcat to Gapplebee's. Marauders do get autocrossed. Perhaps the best use of a marauder is to get it out on a country road and let the dual overhead cam engine sing. Wait, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting! a Mercury Marauder. There are a few areas to look out for when buying these cars. 2003 and 2004 dual overhead cam heads are said to have a flawed casting in the coolant flow design. On the first revision of the cylinder head that caused coolant to dead end at the back of the driver's side head. This caused seven and eight cylinders to run hotter than the other cylinders. The result was a ticking sound that occurs when the valve guides and or seats warp due to running too hot. The ticking sound was the valve not seating correctly and tapping because of it. The problem is more common on the Mach 1 and the Cobra due to their high performance image and their tendency to be driven by freaking maniacs. <laughs> Some modular V8s with aluminum cylinder heads, like the Marauder, have had spark plugs blow out of the hole taking the threads with them. On rare occasions the spark plugs have flown through the hood. A handful of engine fires have been reported from fuel vapor coming out of the cylinder and being ignited by the loose spark plug. The problem is easily fixed by inserting a helicoil where the original spark plug hole was. Uncommon engine issues aside, the Marauder is pretty bulletproof. Haggerty claims the average value of an 03 to 04 Mercury Marauder to be 15800 Prices have spiked recently, so get yours soon while they're still affordable. Thanks for watching this anniversary edition of Jason Bowman Loves Cars and my story of the Mercury Marauder. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment.